Billy Sy here. Today I want to talk about the old dead guy, Gregor Mendel. He was the first person to scientifically study heredity, which we now call genetics. But first, just what is heredity anyway? Heredity is the passing of characteristics, traits, from parents to children. For example, traits like eye color, skin color, whether your earlobes dangle, and lots of other things are based on information passed from parents to children. And it's not just trivial things like those either. It includes everything in your genes. How to build your heart, the structure of the bones in your arms and legs, and a myriad other things. People have known for a very long time that children inherit traits from their parents. This is why you look kind of like your parents. It's also how we can make different breeds of dogs or wheat. But no one studied inheritance scientifically until Gregor Mendel. He was born in 1822 in the Austrian Empire in a town that's now in the Czech Republic. His family was poor and he became a monk, partly in order to get an education without having to pay for it. He started studying heredity in 1856 using pea plants. You know, the kind you eat the seeds of. Gotta eat those greens. He chose them because he could grow them easily. He could develop purebred strains and control pollination. And they were also food for the monastery. Uh, about that controlling pollination. For every plant he grew, he needed to know what plants were the parents. Now, oddly enough, pollination is done with pollen. The pollen can be carried by a breeze or insects. Pea plants can also self-pollinate. That is, the pollen of one plant is used to fertilize the same plant. The part of the flower that sticks up and has a powder-like substance on it is called the stamen. That powder-like substance is the pollen. And that's what makes everybody feel miserable in the spring. Hopefully not you. You can see the pollen in this picture. Pollen contains the sperm for the plant. And below, deeper in the flower, is the pistil that holds the eggs. Yes, flowering plants reproduce sexually. That is, there are sperm and eggs. Okay, now I'm showing off my mad drawing skills. Sorry about that. Now, Mendel couldn't let the pollen just waft down and fertilize his pea plants. So he carefully cut off the stamen and pollen off of the plants. When he decided which plants he was going to fertilize, he used a light brush to carefully transfer the pollen. You know that bees are the main insects that do pollination, carrying pollen from flower to flower, hither and yon. Well, Mendel was acting as a bee, doing the pollination very literally by hand. He chose seven traits that seemed to be inherited independently. Each of these traits had two different ways they appeared. The trait that I've seen mentioned the most is how tall the plants grew, and that's what I'll be concentrating on here. But the full list is plant height, seed shape, flower color, seed coat tint, pod shape, unripe flower color, and flower location. Tall pea plants generally grow to over two and a half meters, about eight feet, and short pea plants are only about 0.6 meters, about two feet tall. And those are the only two sizes. Each of those other traits also comes in only two variations. First, he needed to spend a few generations 
getting some purebred tall plants and some purebred short plants. He bred tall plants together until he only got tall plants, and bred short plants together until he only got short plants. These were the purebred starting plants. This generation of plants were called the P generation, or parent generation. He did the same thing for the other six traits. Next, he bred a short plant with a tall plant. What do you think the children looked like? The pea plants that come from this cross, this mating. Were they short or tall, medium, what? Most of my students say that Mendel got medium-sized plants. But remember, I told you earlier that these traits only come in two varieties, in this case, short and tall. So the child generation couldn't have medium-sized plants. Well, it turns out that every pea plant in this generation was tall. It didn't matter that one of the parents was short. The short variety disappeared. Now, Mendel didn't call this the child generation. He was a learned man in the 1800s, so he used Latin. The Latin word for child is filial. So this was the first filial generation, and he called it the F1 generation. So he bred, he bred together purebred short plants with purebred tall plants and only got tall plants. The other variety, the short variety, disappeared. This also happened with each of the other six traits. One variation disappeared in the F1 generation. Good old Gregor got to wondering if these tall plants had totally lost the inheritedness for short plants. What happened to the short factor? Was it still there, but somehow hidden? He let the F1 plants self-fertilize. For example, for the F1 plant 42, he put the pollen from plant 42 in that plant's flower. What do you think the next generation pea plants look like? This will be the second child generation, so it's the F2 generation. What do you think happened? The short variation returned. But not all plants were short. Only about one in four plants were short. The other three out of four remained tall. The same thing happened with the other six traits he was studying. The variation that disappeared in the F1 generation returned about 25% of the time in the F2 generation. Mendel figured that somewhere in the plant's cell was a factor for tall and a factor for short. Somehow, the short factor was still present in the F1 plants, but it was hidden by the tall factor. Mendel called the stronger factor, the one that hid the other one, dominant, and the weaker factor that disappeared in the F1 generation, recessive. Today we use slightly different words. We still use dominant and recessive, but we don't call them factors. The factors are called alleles. There's an allele for tall pea plants and an allele for short pea plants. Alleles come in pairs. They're on the chromosomes in the nucleus of cells. Chromosomes also come in pairs. One allele on each chromosome. Each organism gets one from the mother and the other from the father. This was really great information back in the 1800s, and Mendel published his work in a scientific journal. Unfortunately, the one he published in wasn't very well read by other scientists, and his work languished in obscurity. In 1900, after Gregor Mendel had died, other scientists 
discovered his work and repeated his experiments. Today, this pattern of inheritance with one trait that has two variations is called Mendelian inheritance or Mendelian genetics. Mendel is considered the father of genetics. So, that's the beginnings of, of how genetics is usually studied. Good old Gregor Mendel. Thanks for watching. Riley Sy out. <laughs>